Yeah, so energy prices, of course, it's, it's all emanating from what's happening in natural gas. And natural gas, you can almost draw a parallel with, imagine if you were driving down a motorway and someone really breaks very hard, that creates a ripple effect, right? That creates a clog on the entire motorway. That's what we're seeing in natural gas market. So the, a supply disruption is creating that backlog, that, that, that tightness that could continue for one season and then another season and so forth. So a, a lot depends on what sort of winter we get. If we get a very strong winter that is a colder winter than average, then this tightness could persist and we may continue to see uh, utility companies, for example, facing challenges. But if the winter is relatively mild, if we finally get some sun, the sun that we haven't had all year in here in the UK, we may see some of that pressure easing. But uh, of course, we also have the COP26, the United Nations Climate Change Conference coming up, and nothing like a crisis to catalyze change. Hopefully, this will be a good catalyst to drive that energy transition in the long run. Mabeen, as we talk about transitions, we are counting down to COP26. I know you've been looking into the future around areas where you might see stepped up investment and monumental change. How are you future proofing the portfolio? Yeah, so COP26 is an exciting opportunity for it, for policymakers to really reaffirm their commitment to climate change goals, right? Remember, it was COP21 back in 2015 when the historic Paris Agreement was signed. But a lot has changed in, in the last six years. Uh, two things, uh, notably, for number one, uh, policymakers' urgency has, has certainly increased. And two, a number of technologies, green technologies, where that green technology revolution is taking place, have moved from the margins to the mainstream. And that's the notable shift. For example, in 2015, uh, only half a million people went and bought an electric vehicle, whereas this year that number is expected to be closer to 6.4 million. So a huge shift. But it's not just about building the vehicles, right? It's about building better batteries. It's about building recycling infrastructure, charging infrastructure, uh, having a well-distributed network of energy storage systems. It's about looking at alternative emerging technologies like hydrogen fuel cells, for example, which, which could be a viable alternative to lithium-ion batteries. So you said, how do you future-proof your portfolio? Investors shouldn't just be looking at lithium-ion batteries, for example, when they're looking about looking at the transition from fossil fuels to renewables, they should be looking at emerging technologies as well and taking a more holistic view at the megatrend.